Okay. In the other room, we have a uh, a ball python that uh, is about 30 years old. It's about a one on the body scale out of five. Uh, it's very, very emaciated. Uh, it's got scars on its face and head. Uh, it's very serious dysectysis. Um, and and other signs of uh, of dermatol you know dermatopathy on the underside. This snake is in dire straits. Also, it's leaning its head backwards, not trying to gasp for air. Although its trachea is very thickened and glottis is thickened, um, it, you'd think it would be gasping, but it's not. So right now, at this point in time, it's also quite neurologic. Anyway, what you're seeing on the slide there in front of you is basically histomonas and trichomonas. The uh, trichomonas propels itself with the flagella on the back end, and the histomonas has like a grab and pull technique and does it on the front end. Also, the snake has uh, has a fungal infection, um, and it's also in the fecal as well. You can see that about 8:30, there's that little round area that is actually a spore on the end of a stalk. So there's a good chance this is uh, aspergillus, um, and uh, a fungal that actually infects birds, snakes. Uh, um, even people, so it's a, it's a big problem. Um, anyway, this guy is uh, quite emaciated and, uh, and even has, uh, we did an oral cytology as well, and that may be coming up next. Nope, there's just more, uh, more a, a, fewer, a smaller sample of the organisms. You may be able to see the difference between the trichomonas and histomonas. Anyway, back to the, uh, the cytology. Um, we saw uh, another more polymorphic yeast in there. Uh, two different yeast sizes, uh, the bacteria, there was at least four to five different types of bacteria in the mouth. Uh, this snake was actually in dire straits. At any one point in time on this creature, it would seem like the respiratory tract infection might be easy enough to treat, the bacterial infection you know, might be easy enough to treat, the fungal infection might be easy enough to treat. But since he has two species of, of, uh, of protozoa, um, possibly three species of yeast, and Lord knows how many different species of bacteria. And the client just doesn't want to watch the snake go through it getting worse before it gets better. The client did opt to euthanize the snake. Um, he offered it up for science. So, you know, at this point in time, having videotaped this much, I thought that would be enough uh, to, uh, there you go. There's the, the yeast forms, large yeast forms in the mouth. You can see the bacteria everywhere. This is just one of those really, really bad cases. He's been calling for days, trying to make it in, but between his schedule, it just didn't work. Anyway, um, this snake has been euthanized. I did have one final piece of video to show you, and that was just before we uh, did the deed. Um, it was pain-free for the snake. He then went limp, and as a standard operating procedure, I always, after I've given them the euthanasia solution, um, I then go and freeze them and get them back to the clients the next day. So anyway, um, I'm not going to say enjoy the slide, but there is a lot to learn here from this case. So, Okay, today we're presented with an over 30 year old ball python. Uh, this guy's been sick for a while. You can see by the scarring one in the face, this guy was actually mauled by a rat a while back. Um, there are no injuries anywhere else them that I can see, but our buddy here is quite emaciated. Uh, miraculously, the history actually has him eating one or even two rats since the attack, um, and which I find in itself remarkable. Anyway, uh, this is what we're looking at today. As you can tell, we're quite neurologic. Uh, chances are we may be looking at a bacterial meningitis or a fungal meningitis. I've uh, done some cytologies. It turns out we have histomonas and trichomonas in the fecal. We also have what looks like a uh, aspergillus-type fungi in the stool as well. Uh, when we swab the mouth, I can actually see some of the uh, aspergillus like fungi in there, as well as some uh, two morphologically different kinds of yeast. Um, anyway, uh, because of the age, because of uh, our body condition, and this, uh, we're so neurologic, we're going to go ahead and up to just uh, put this girl down. Um, it's, a, it's a sad case because uh, this client is actually very, very sad at this point. It's been a while since I've seen a man cry. But, uh, Anyway, we thought we would share this because if there's any way we can stop this from happening to another snake, or maybe we can help some vet student get them through it, or find out where you know where where to stop and draw the line, you know this uh, this may help as far as indication goes. I think getting over any one of these problems by itself might be easy enough. The histomonas by itself, the trichomonas by itself, the aspergillosis, or even the other fungal organisms. But having all of those 
mixed up in, the, in a very emaciated case, as well as being neurologic, tells us that uh, you would probably get worse or get better, and this snake can't handle any worse. Would probably be the end. Anyway, rest in peace, everybody.